welcome to Doggy Style TV. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm awesome. How are you? Great. Awesome. It's great to be here in Los Angeles. And I am at Pussy and Pooch. And three of the adjectives that Janine likes to express about her store and this company is natural, bouncy, and organic. So tell us all about your store and your company. Ah, natural, bouncy, and organic. Hmm. <laughs> well, that must be implying the products that we sell here. Absolutely. Uh, we are known for featuring quite a... Um, uh, and, well, not unusual. I'd say a little bit more unique assortment of things that are some very distinctive, um, very design forward, um, but also really amazing quality. Uh, we like to feature things that we source um, domestically and or from Canada and uh, things from our local community as much as possible. Which is really great. I mean, there's so many products on the market now. You have to do the research. Yes. So many stores sell things. And sometimes I walk into the stores and I think, really? Like, but here, I mean, I've noticed with the array of products and like you said, the quality, it's just outstanding. And you do all the Thank buying you. yourself? Um, I do most of it, or at least the research part of it myself, mm -hmm. but then we do have a team uh, internally that helps to execute the overall philosophy of what we stand for. Which is awesome. So you do, um, you have the paw bar, which we're standing at right now. Tell me about this concept, please. The paw bar is sort of our claim to fame. Uh, it's an in-store pet cafe for dogs and cats to come and have a fresh prepared meal. Uh, we use it very much though as a social uh, gathering spot as well as a nutritional tool for helping to guide pet parents how to choose a healthy diet that's appropriate for their animals. That's so smart. So let's say, you know, I have a pet, I come in, I'm not really sure what food to give them. So you actually say, hey, why don't you have a seat here and we'll, we'll take your animal through it. They can test different things and see what they like and what they don't. It's yes. a great indication, right? Um, for sure. Um, most of what we like to feature here at the Paw Bar is raw meat meals. Um, so raw feeding for pets is what we believe in mm -hmm. because it's the most close to their natural um, diet if they were to be out in the wild. And so a lot of times pet parents will come in and they will say, oh, my dog is picky or 
they don't like anything or they have allergies or this or that and um, and so we, we walk them through the food and explain all of its benefits and then once they see how much the animal enjoys it then generally that does result in a in a sale yeah so so we ha we are the originators of this sort of a concept and an in-store dining experience um, it's a lot of fun and I can um, once the animals come in and they've eaten here in the store they never seem to forget it and um, <laughs> they always want to come back they always want to come back it's They're great they started to do I was like, we want to go to Pussy and Pooch. <laughs> like, oh, let's go. Yeah. That's awesome. It's very sweet. You know, it's, it's interesting because I, a lot of my friends, you know, they, they get dogs for the first time. They're not really sure. And I'm like, you know, raw is the way to go. And I give them raw marrow bones. And they're like, raw, are you kidding me? And a lot of people are still not aware or familiar that uh, of the raw diets and how good they are for the dogs. Um, because you're right, it's what they eat in the wild. And that's yeah. what I tell them. It's like, well, your dog in the wild kills, you know, except unless they're garbage pickers. And, yes, know. yes. And that's exactly why we created the paw bars. When, when my husband and I made the choice to go raw with our animals, there weren't, um, there didn't seem to be any place where we could go to get educated on the topic. So it was mostly through our own research uh, that we kind of have been guided on, on where to go with it. So the concept of the paw bar has been to, to really see it seeing is believing yes so it you really see is. it you smell it you try it um, and you see how easy it can be so certainly there's the different spectrum of the raw feeding for pets and the commercially prepared raw food diets that we sell here in the store right. are the, the easiest way to go especially mm -hmm. if you're starting out now if you become a hardcore advocate and you have lots of animals or you have big animals then you might look to going towards something where you're doing your own prepared diets right. um, where you're buying meat in bulk and it's a whole process to, to prepare it. But the easiest thing to do is a commercially prepared raw food diet. Yeah, no doubt. I've seen uh, also the dry foods, they have dehydrated pieces of raw in it now. Yes. How do you feel about that? I uh, love that. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a general scheme of things, dry food for for cat especially, but also for dog, is um, is really not awesome food. It's really not the best way to feed your animals if it can be avoided at all. Um, if you can at least do a blend of things where you are incorporating bit, bits of the freeze-dried mm -hmm. or substituting some days with raw, basically advocating for a rotational diet. So if you do have to incorporate dry food into your diet, do it in moderation and do it right. with a variety of other types of foods. Canned, yeah. raw, freeze-dried. So that brings me to my next question because of course in your store as well as many other stores and on the market itself there's so many dried foods now and they say they're organic they're natural they have all kinds of vitamins in it but at the same time you're suggesting now that the dry food thing is not necessarily the way to go so how do people know like what what really is the truth? The biggest piece of advice is to get educated and become a more educated consumer and an educated pet parent. You can't always believe the claims that are on a bag that are coming from the manufacturer. You have to understand what is biologically appropriate for animals to be eating and you as the caregiver need to take the initiative in that role to provide them the best that your budget and your schedule can afford you. Right. So I think that that part of it is key. So the reason why dry food is not ideal is because it's the most processed uh, type of food right. and so it's only common sense that tells you that that over a long period of time no matter what additional vitamins they put into it and whatever claims they make on it it is not awesome for the body to have to break down right on a constant basis. on a constant basis it, it's, yeah. it's equivalent to you eating cereal yeah. the same type of cereal for the entire length of your life Wow, <laughs> that would get boring. It gets boring too, right? You know, or potatoes yeah. that are in a box that have yeah. been, you know, somehow manufactured, and they have all sorts of preservatives and different things in them. It's just you compare that to eating a regular potato. It's apples and oranges. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how do you feel about the canned foods, like the canned meats and the processed of those? Are they good? Or I, I love those um, yeah. because I think that that's a nice happy medium. Mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason, people may choose to not explore something like a raw food diet or something that takes a lot of effort, like a home prepared diet. Um, if you get into doing canned food at least 50%, so one meal wet and one meal dry, um, it's less processed, 
um, it's more nutritious, um, it's easier to digest, like there's a, a ton of reasons why it's actually preferred to a dry food. Really? It is more expensive because right. of the canning process and there are the, you know, the potential other um, tricky things about well, being in the can, can too, right? And BPF, yeah, or is that what it's called? B is it BPA? Or BPA? BPA? Yeah. <laughs> BPA. <laughs> um, not all the cans have it, but many, unfortunately, do. Um, but it's kind of like, I don't know, if you're evaluating, as the pet parent, all the evils in the world and making the best decision that you feel most comfortable with, you mm -hmm. know? Of course. So, like I said, if you're not going to be able to do a raw food diet, if you can do something that is less processed like a canned food diet, then, that yeah. is better. Assuming, of course, that it is a quality canned food diet and right. not one of yes. the less expensive, lots of fillers, lots of grain, right. lots of preservatives. Like you never want to see preservatives, coloring agents, um, just all those different emulsifiers and things. Like you want it to be as close to just the real meat in a can as possible. Of course. I mean, you said, you know, budget and schedule, and that's definitely two things that people um, have difficulty with at times you know and they do have the dogs and, and you know you have other dogs that have been eating this dry food day in day out with no extra protein or vitamins or anything of the sort and they seem to be doing okay I mean they still live till they're the average age of you know so forth so on so it's it's really hard to say but it really it's kind of our philosophy of what we put into our bodies, yes, exactly, and then what we want our dogs or our exactly. animals. And it's a, pets it's a to lifestyle eat. choice. It's a lifestyle choice, and not everybody's in the lifestyle and, of this. Exactly, and, you know, and I get exactly. that, and that's okay. You know, and, and they'll do their best as to what they right. have to do. And that's why we do our part to try to inform and educate as that's much right. as possible. So yes. regardless of whether or not you buy any of the awesome products that we've hand selected for you um, it's just about being a better informed consumer yeah very much so and it's funny I'm gonna go back to the cat thing because I, I I'm, I'm trying to imagine cats up, do they sit on the counter here and eat um, it has been a combination of both if yeah. they actually come in on harness typically those cats will eat in the right. lower portions down here um, but a lot of times if they are here for a special event I will oftentimes put them on the top that's nice. um, and we have a special shark shaped plate that I like to Oh, that's um, cute. Get out for the oh, kitties. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So do people actually go out of their way to bring their cat here and say, hey, let's go for a little walk? Because not a lot of people go out with their cats. So True. what what would motivate them? Uh, the social well, aspect, maybe? The, the social aspect, for sure. Um, more and more people are harness training their cats. Yeah, which is so, great. So it is becoming more common. And then we do something here in the store, which is pretty unique, called the Meow Mingle. Oh, tell me. So we've been hosting Mutt Mingles monthly since the beginning of the store. And it's basically our version of a yappy hour, where people come and they bring their dog for a bit of social time, um, you know, adult beverages, snacks for the humans, and then a, a different assortment of things from the paw bar for the dogs. And we thought, well, why should they get to have all the fun? Why can't we have a cat party? Right. So it's, it's, it was kind of funny the first time we did it. We thought, well, will we actually get people to come to a cat party? But as I suspected, they're very anxious to be social with their cats as well. Isn't that lovely? So we've had several outstanding cat events where the last one we just had, we had about 20 cats here in the store come with their on. owners. How square. cute is that? <laughs> Super cute. But do the cats get along with each other? Uh, it's interesting to watch because it's neutral territory, so they're not trying to necessarily claim anything. They're all in mm -hmm. it together. There's usually sometimes always one who's just super overstimulated and just not comfortable but for the most part um, most of them they just kind of get into their position wherever they feel most secure so they will usually get inside some of the fixtures or they allow the humans to hold them and they just sit and get petted and the owners all talk there's lots of picture taking oh it's, how cute you've really never seen anything like no that. I have never <laughs> seen anything I'm sure you've never seen anything like it it's, either this is great it's a lot of fun and I we, want to see this and we do fun different themes like we've had a quinceanera a sweet 16 um, the one last week it was like a class reunion slash graduation theme you're kidding so we did potographs and we had portraits and wow the holiday one had pictures with Santa it was fun this must keep you really busy I mean you have three <laughs> locations do you do this in every location yes 
That's wild. Yes. And I, so, do you serve food or treats for the people too? Oh yeah. 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 Like what? Like do they get? I am kind of a Holly homemaker in that way, and I. Oh, you cook too. Well, on top of running through stores <laughs> and doing all your graphics and all your displays, I, I you make cookies. I love to. Um, I love to to host a party. So everything, if I have a theme to run with, is just presented in a beautiful way. So a lot of times it's just really quick and easy little bite you know, tasty bites, mm -hmm. either sweet or savory, with one or two signature cocktails. And it looks like it's a sure. really nice affair. Just because it was thought out, you know, versus just so throwing when, down when people like come in and do you actually sell them the cat food? Do they do they, is there a price for this? For or? what for the paw bar? For the paw bar, yeah. For the oh, paw bar, paw bar yeah. yeah, but like when you're mingle parties, do the they mingle parties no? are always complimentary. Wow. It's like a customer appreciation. Of course. And it's once a month? Um, the meow mingle is about every other month, right. and the mutt mingle is every single month. What a great And sometimes idea. we partner with community, um, other community partners, and so um, sometimes we get, you know, like our local restaurants and bars to kick in various things for the humans mm -hmm. and or prizes for raffles, and sometimes we partner with our manufacturers to offer something as well, and people go home with a little swag bag or a raffle prize, so it's, it's very interactive. That's awesome. Yeah. Now you said something now which triggers my next question. Um, you're social, you like to plan events and have people over. And is that why you started a retail shop? I mean, what was, because you have cats, you don't have dogs. We have one. You we have, have one dog. Why, oh, you do have one mm -hmm. dog. What kind of dog is it? Jack Russell. Oh, yeah, I, I, that's funny. Someone else <laughs> I interviewed has a Jack Russell. What are they, big in California or what? Um, they're my husband's favorite breed. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're definitely a handful. Do they come and hang out at the store too? Um, he does, not so often anymore. Yeah. He's an emotional Jack Russell. Oh, I see, yeah. That yeah. happens. That's the last owner of the year. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what, what made you get into this? It was more so about creating an amenity for the downtown LA neighborhood um, or the downtown LA community, which we have seen a huge resurgence in in the last, really, I want to say the last 15 years it's been brewing. Mm -hmm. And Indeed. having been a person living down here, knowing what was here and what wasn't here and how many people were coming with animals, I knew that at some point there needed to be a store like this to cater to, to their needs. and was ready for a career change and here we are. <laughs> this is your flagship store, right? Yes. And your other two stores are where? In Long Beach. Lo both of them are in Long Beach? Mm -hmm. Love Long Beach. Long Beach is a very, very dog friendly area. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it definitely is, mm -hmm. without a doubt. And and I see it all over. Yesterday I was having a burrito <laughs> at Chipotle's and there was a little puppy sitting in the third chair of the outdoor table and I thought, Okay, I know it's a puppy, and typically we don't like our dogs on furniture and eating at our dinner tables, but it was so sweet, I couldn't help but notice and think, wow, it's really sweet. Yeah. So, um, tell me about your award-winning grooming salons. Well, um, we have, uh, we've started this store with self-service, and we have eventually grown it into the full-service grooming. Uh, the self-service was meant to cater to the loft dweller, easy and convenient mm -hmm. and uh, inexpensive. And then the full-service, of course, we do all sorts of different haircuts, breed cuts, styles, and stuff. Blueberry so facials, I have Blueberry to tell you, like, I was a little blown away. Like, wow, tell me about that. It's, uh, it's just a lot of salons will do it as an add-on. Um, we have it is incorporated as part of the groom and it's a special product that's gentle that is used on the face each bath is started with that and uh, it's just a nice way to relax the dog into the grooming experience How it's sweet. brightening it's whitening it smells oh, it really is good as well, yeah the blueberry mm -hmm. whitening um, and do you think like we do aromatherapy for mm -hmm. us and of course I'm sure it works for yes. animals too right yes, absolutely so with that apply the same when they're smelling the blueberry on their face mm -hmm. and does it relax them or it's supposed to really mm -hmm. that's so amazing I just that's it, it's unbelievable what this pet <laughs> industry has become over the years and you're right it has been a 15-year surge um, in me too selling my products and seeing how people have taken to them I remember when I used to first sell dog shoes people would be like laughing at me running down the street you know I'd be on rollerblades my dogs would be in shoes and they'd be like you've got to be kidding me right what's next well, this is next. So next time you're in Los Angeles, come out to Pussy and Pooch in downtown Los Angeles or Long Beach and come and say hello to Janine and all their friendly staff members at the store. Thanks. That's great, Janine. Thank you so much. Thank you. I wish you all the continued success. Thank you. That's great. So Janine, short of people coming into the store, 
and you educating them on food. What else do you do? Well, a really fun way to get the education is to participate in our What's in Their Bowl month, uh, which it happens generally in the spring and uh, runs all month long. And it's a learn it, feed it, win it kind of a concept where the learn it is participate in one of our free nutritional classes. Um, we do a 90 minute introductory class on pet food that tells you uh, what's in a pet food, how to read a label, what to look for, what to avoid, and how to pick the best diet that's appropriate for your pet and uh, we offer that at no cost. And then in addition to that, we have vendor demo days where you can actually come and meet the manufacturers and ask them questions directly. That's so smart. We do um, opportunities for um, all sorts of different promos where they can get into some different type of a food at a less expensive price, so that it encourages them to try it. And, uh, and then we also have a, a contest where you can win free food for a year. Oh, that would be nice. So, so we wrap up the whole thing with a fun element as well. Um, just again, it's food focused. You know, that's really smart. And I, again, going back to the budget thing, I mean, for someone to think that they might have an opportunity to win free food for a year and actually be able to afford, yes. that would really make it worthwhile for them. So for sure. do a lot of people come to these classes? Um, it's it's hit or miss. Um, I want to say that the first few years we were sort of getting getting it sorted out. We actually had a nutritionist that came that I, you know, it was we were hosting it. Right. And uh, and interestingly enough, last year we had the best attendance yet, and it was me doing the classes. Really? I don't. I yeah. So I don't, do you think people love you? Or what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if it was less intimidating than an actual nutritionist or if maybe it was more exciting because it's the founder of Pussy and Pooch but either way we did have a really good yeah. um, turnout last year so I anticipate yeah. um, is good or better this year. You know I, I guess too because uh, as we've seen it's been the last maybe I'll say five years but really two, three years where people are really paying attention to this For stuff, sure. right? Since the pet food recall that happened in 2007, it really was eye-opening for right? people everywhere. Right, exactly. So I think that's really important, especially now with, come on, let's face it, we all know that pets are our kids, so uh, we might as well take care of them properly. Sure. And that's awesome when you're, yeah, they like to get to know owners of places. I'm sure they're your customers that you meet on a daily basis too, so yeah. that's super important. Yeah. And you do this in all three of your locations? I do it in all three, and um, you know, it doesn't matter the size of groups, small or large. Um, and then it's interesting when they come to the event, the, the knowledge that they have beforehand is from one end of the spectrum to the other. And I really love that because um, it, it kind of like is something new for everybody. Yeah, which is great, exactly. You know, And everyone's sharing their information together too. Yes. So yes. that's really important as well. Right. So it's reinforcing for the people that, you know, are at a, a basic level of feeding and it's very supportive for the people who are at a higher level of feeding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what can they continue to do to tweak their that's routine right. to have optimal health? And they see, you know, the people that have been feeding their dogs really well for X amount of time mm -hmm. can share that information as well. So it's, mm -hmm. it's living proof. For sure. So that's really supportive for the cause, mm -hmm. you know, of feeding your pet well. Um, would you be able to make me something? Can you show me how some, uh, something food-wise would be prepared I for a dog? I would love to. Just okay. give me a minute. What are you putting on the plate here? What is this orange? The orange, is, the orange is our secret sauce. Oh, secret sauce. So that means you won't be telling us what it is. That means I will not be telling you what it is. Um, the second Can you give us a hint? Is no. it meat related? Or? Um, no, it's generally veggie related. Okay, veggie related. Fair enough. Um, and the, we always garnish, this isn't coming out very well, but we, we always garnish each with a, uh, a bit of pumpkin puree because it's great for digestion. And then, you didn't know that? No. Nope. Oh, it's an excellent source of dietary fiber. And um, so often when dogs, you know, they just, especially if they're on a grain-free diet or something, mm -hmm. they need to have some of the extra fiber in their diets. Many do, not of all. Of course. Um, well, fiber's good for all of us, right? Yeah. So, okay. it's, so we sell a lot of it. It's actually, it's really good for diarrhea and constipation. Really? And just really helping to, to keep them regular. <laughs> regular? I think I'm going to start eating more. <laughs> okay, not no, enough about me. Okay, so tell me about, um, you've got parsley on there. Wow, this it, is yeah. so cute. This is for a dog, right? Yeah, this is for a dog. Is so I don't know. So each time we do it, we kind of just get a little crazy. Um, sometimes I have different things to garnish with. Um, you know, either green beans or shredded carrots, 
um, and then of course you know I do the little parsley um, palm trees yeah little palm trees so what is the actual is that meat it is raw pheasant raw pheasant mm -hmm. okay I'm gonna get a little close-up on this and let's take what does raw pheasant look like and where does it come from is this grown <laughs> in California or um, this is um, this is uh, pheasant by primal which is one of the raw pet food manufacturers and then um, usually when we do garnish um, we do freeze-dried fruits and vegetables um, and then we do chia seeds for the antioxidants and the uh, omegas and then we'll also add some other little extra accoutrement um, that happens to be freeze-dried liver I would say that that one percent eats the garnish it's actually really excellent for their digestion but but they mostly don't and what those little red things on top are what? Cranberries? Cranberries. Sometimes we do sun-dried tomatoes, sometimes we do cranberry, like I said, shredded carrot, beans. Is that a fortune cookie? And then they get, You're kidding each me. meal gets a fortune cookie. That's for dogs. And the fortune says? Confucius say, dog house broken, hire a carpenter. <laughs> They're always just little silly dog fortunes. That's amazing. This would be considered a small raw meal, um, but we can also do different sizes. We can do burgers. We can do um, organic prepared bowls, which is um, usually a freeze-dried or dehydrated diet that we prepare, which we, you can add. Like, a, like doing like an extra shot of espresso, you can do an extra shot of meat. <laughs> so you can do an extra ounce of protein with it. How many people percentage-wise do you think would actually do that for their dogs? Knowing what you do, and the people that you teach? Oh, a very small percentage. Because we've been told uh, that the industry average of, of people who are um, seek out independent specialty retailers is approximately seven to 10% in the US. If you think about that, that's a very, very small number. That means that at least 90% of people are shopping in the grocery store and or their um, discount mass retailers for the pet food, let alone, you know, doing something fresh prepared. At this point, but you know, that's why you're educating them and you're having them come to you and you give them but, so much. But it's a very, very slow revolution for sure. Oh yes, I understand and know all about that. <laughs> it took 20 years for people to understand that dog shoes were important and other products and coats and things, so. Yeah. But you know what, you're gonna get there because you are star quality, my friend. I hope so. <laughs>